up? It's Matt. Welcome to another episode of Taco Potato Mustang. I haven't made a video in a while because I've been pretty busy with the baby and work, but uh, can't complain too much. So in uh, today we're going to install a GT500 steering wheel on the on my 2014 Ford Mustang. So this is the. Um, the GT500 steering wheel, you can see the, the difference between the OEM steering wheel is that on the, this is on the GT, uh, I'm assuming this is similar on the base model, but it's just leather wrapped steering wheel, uh, pretty basic. It's got some controls for the radio and um, cruise control. And it's just, the controls are the same on the GT500 steering wheel, but the big difference is you have Alcantara on uh, a few spots actually I guess it would be on um, two spots because it just wraps around the back um, but s seems like it'd be um, a little bit of an upgrade uh, in terms of appearance and hopefully the feeling um, driving with the Alcantara steering wheel so we're gonna try and get this installed today and then take it for a drive and see how I like it and see if it was worth the cost first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, disconnect to the negative uh, battery terminal. The battery is under that cover there. Um, I gotta be honest, I think those things, the master cylinder and um, battery cover look cool, but I have no idea why I got them because I don't ever show my engine off. I mean, obviously it's like super dusty, but yeah, this isn't exactly a show car. I think the reason why you want to disconnect the battery is so that you don't have the risk of the airbag going off when you're changing the uh, steering wheel because you have to remove, you have to use the airbag that's in the car already and just transfer that to the new steering wheel. So once the battery is disconnected, you're going to look for these two plastic plugs on either side of the steering wheel. I just got this one loose with a... Um, a little, uh, well, actually, I did because I didn't get it that loose with a little uh, pry bar. Got the left side out. Can't really see much with the light. They, I'm just getting this the other side out, but I would say it seems like if you go on the top of the plug, that's the easiest place to get um, like a screwdriver or a pry bar in rather than the sides or the bottom. Okay, got the second one out. Need to consult my handwritten instructions. So it seems like there's two eight millimeter airbag retaining bolts. Now with the light on, you can see. Gotta get magnet always. The uh, left side was a little bit harder to um, to break loose, but <clears throat> I mean, I, you can do it by hand. Okay, got the other side out. Consulting the instructions. So I'm supposed to bring the airbag forward and rotate to expose the backside. Okay, I might need two hands for this. So I believe there's two electrical connections between the steering wheel and the airbag, but 
to double check. Okay, so I'm assuming they mean these two because there's only that one wire. Okay, so it seems like maybe you need to squeeze these connections. Ah, okay. So the, like towards the top, it's kind of hard to see, but like towards the um, top part of the clip, you just want to press in and pull up and it comes out pretty easily. Uh, I almost pulled the yellow parts off, uh, which you should not do. Okay, so here is the airbag. Put that away for now. And then I think the next thing we need to do is disconnect the main steering wheel control harness from the clock spring. I'm not sure I even know what the clock spring is. I know this is the um, steering wheel to steering shaft retaining bolt. That's the piece that I had to order um, because it's torque to spec, so you have to replace it if you replace the steering wheel. I understand that I'm also supposed to make sure I don't rotate the clock spring when I um, remove this steering wheel. To try and proceed with caution. Okay, I think that is the steering wheel control harness, and I guess the clock spring is wherever it gets plugged into. Okay, so then I, I think I need to get a um, um, my uh, impact or a drive or whatever to remove this. My plug-in hyper tough uh, impact wrench with the 24 millimeter like regular socket appears to fit okay in where it needs to be. So let's see if uh, we can do this without causing a ruckus. That's pretty quick. Here is the retaining bolt. You can definitely smell some burning. Or I don't know what it is, just like some heat from the uh, untorquing of the bolt. And then, uh, so I think I said this a minute ago, but it says to remove the steering wheel and be careful not to rotate the clock spring. Okay, so this is the clock spring. And I did notice that as I pulled off the, I'm not even sure if the camera's looking at the right thing. As I pulled off the steering wheel, it kind of moved a little bit, so I, I can see why there is a warning for um, making sure it doesn't rotate. So one thing I wrote down in my instructions to remind myself to do was 
was uh, take advantage of the fact that the steering wheel is out and check on the clutch spring, which is a really difficult thing to access normally. I made a video on that installation at some point. So this is the clutch spring. Um, when I installed it like a couple of years ago or last year, I don't even know when, um, like part of the plastic piece that goes in between the spring, it uh, broke, but I was able to keep it like um, aligned it seems to be working. I haven't really had any issues with it, but I do just want to check on it. I would say if you're um, a, uh, a tall person, you know, taller than average, um, and you're planning on doing the steering wheel installation and the um, clutch spring, kind of makes sense to do them both at the same time if you haven't already done one or the other one or the other at least that's my takeaway right now after having all this space there's so much room for activities yeah so now we want to get the gt500 steering wheel on and then get the torque the bolt torqued to spec and then get everything plugged in and uh go from there working on it progress okay i wasn't recording but i did see another thing that they didn't say in the video that i watched but basically when you're putting the new steering wheel back on um you also got to be careful with uh, the clock spring it seemed like as soon as anything touched the connections for the airbag it would just start moving pretty easily so just be careful with that and also, if your steering wheel is not completely straight when you're putting it back on, I mean, just keep an eye out for how the um, the housing for the bolt is aligned. And it's obvious, but sometimes it's, it's worth saying. Um, and I believe the torque spec is um, 41 pound-feet. Also, you can turn the wheel until the column locks and that might help um, to uh, torque it down a little bit more easily. We'll see, give this a try. I need to find a better place to put my camera. I think I need a uh, extension for my for my torque wrench. Twenty four millimeter socket. Gotta make sure we're going the right direction. Okay, there we go. 
Um, it also says on my instructions that you can, uh, even though the battery is disconnected, you can turn the wheel or put the key in the ignition to turn the wheel back to center. I'm not sure if that's actually true. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Take it out, just to be on the safe side. Reinstall the steering wheel. I already did that. And the airbag. Okay. Let's do the... Uh, I have the worst short-term memory. Um, we need to do the steering wheel control harness first. Put that back in. Okay, got a little click. And then we do the airbag again. The reverse of the, what we did last time. Of course, now I'm wondering, like, <laughs> I'm questioning myself on which side was which. Okay. All right, now we gotta get these eight millimeter bolts back in on the sides. Okay, get the plugs back in. And an important moment Couldn't do it perfectly. Meh. Now that I'm holding the steering wheel, I see it's pretty nice that they have the Alcantara that how it goes. It's so it's like one piece on each side rather than like just up here. Like it's it's also behind the controls, which I feel like is pretty nice because you're presumably going to be moving your hands up and down on the sides, and when you're holding the butt, when you're you know using the buttons, you're also touching the Alcantara, which is pretty cool. Like uh, this one is kind of old. It's pretty sticky. We need to uh, wipe this down with something. <laughs> and then we have the bottom one. Let's 
weird. These two are fine, but this one was a little bit, seemed like it got a little stuck on there. Actually, one thing that, one of my biggest complaints about these steering wheels is I don't like the material on the, I don't know what you call these, but like the, um, this plastic right here. I wish it was darker like this or even darker. Um, and I've seen that there's companies that make like carbon fiber versions of these. I might try to see about painting the ones from my stock steering wheel now that I can just take them off. Um, but I, I have yet to find like a, a video, uh, on like painting this type of plastic where I actually see something that I think I would actually want to try. But, um, the only reason I, I wouldn't want to do the carbon fiber is because there's nothing else that really matches it unless you like add carbon fiber to different parts of the car and then you're just adding material, which I, I mean, it's better than like a sticker, but you know, I don't like the idea of just like adding pieces that go over existing pieces rather than having replacements, if that makes sense. So, well, let's see uh, about taking this car for a drive after we get the battery reconnected. See if this uh, steering wheel upgrade is seems like it's worth the cost. Try and do this before it gets too dark. We're going to. Uh, no, I can't find my keys, of course. We're going to uh, take this car for a drive with this new steering wheel and see how we like it. Interesting. So part of the reason why I got the uh, GT500 steering wheel versus the uh, Boss 302 is that, which I, I think the Boss 302 is like um, completely like the whole steering wheel is uh, Alcantara and uh, obviously on the um, GT500 it's uh, a combination of leather wrapped in Alcantara um, but the reason I picked this one I mean, actually I don't honestly I don't even know if the Boss 302 is um, widely available anymore. Uh, I heard that Alcantara gets dirty really easily um, and that it's difficult to keep clean. So we'll see if um, hopefully that's not an issue with this steering wheel, but um, certainly a possibility. I mean, one thing I already like is that like I mean I could tell when uh, when it's uh, like a little bit cooler temperatures and you have the regular steering wheel like it makes it a lot harder or it makes it the grip not as good um, when you're trying to drive with one hand I feel like it, your hand can slip a lot more easily off the steering wheel um, but just from like moving from the leather to the Alcantara right now I can tell that this definitely helps I think uh, visually it looks pretty nice like the difference is obviously very subtle like it's not like a significantly different steering wheel from an appearance standpoint but it's enough of a difference that I think you can appreciate it. It makes the car feel a little bit nicer on the inside. Look a little bit nicer on the inside, I should say. I'm gonna take it on a, a sort of windy back road that I like to drive both my cars on. 
I think uh, so far from the short drive, the nice thing is I usually have like my left hand on the bottom left part of the steering wheel. Like it's just an easy place to keep it. And my the place where I naturally put my hand has the Alcantara on it, which feels pretty good. useful from a functional functionality standpoint um, I it's funny that I got this and now I'm like thinking oh it'd be nice if there was Alcantara all around the steering wheel but you know uh, I'm not gonna get rid of this for the boss 302 steering wheel I mean even if I if, I mean I feel like the only thing reason I might do something like that is if I was using this car as a track car regularly and I needed like to make sure I had the good grip all around the steering wheel. But I'm not a huge like track day guy, partially because I just don't have the time. Um, but this seems to be like you know, a pretty good purpose built part. And I guess the ultimate question uh, on left to, to answer about the steering wheel is is it worth the cost I, I gotta be honest uh, I think it's a little expensive I, I want to say I paid like 450 bucks for the steering wheel like around 450 bucks um, and the only reason I did it is because I had a gift card for uh, American Muscle uh, like I don't know if I would have paid $450 if I didn't have a gift card this seems like it should be a little bit cheaper um, but I mean I, it's all up, I guess it's all up to personal preference you know if you really like the look and you really just want to have the Alcantara then you know what's the it's really up to you to determine whether or not you think it's worth the cost but yeah anyways uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel and you like my video, please hit subscribe. Keep an eye out for more on the uh, dude Stang and uh, some stuff I got planned for the Fox Mustang and some other nonsense. Anyways, hope you're staying healthy. Hope you're staying safe. Peace out.